Well, listen, today we're going to be continuing in our series, and all this month we've been doing these let there be, right? Let there be peace, let there be hope, let there be life. Um, And uh, today I'm going to be talking about let there be love. Now, I got to say, listen, this idea of love, now we as Christians and followers of Jesus, we, you know, we're used to this idea. So I don't think that I'm going to woo you with so much new information because I think that the majority of us already know so much of this that I'm going to talk about this idea of love. But you know what? I think something that happens, and this is just because of the familiarity of it, is that, you know what, even especially at this time of even of year, the story of Jesus coming as a baby, you know, we're used to it. We've heard it so many times, and sometimes it can lose its impact. And the same thing for me to get up here and we talk about, you know, that this is an expression of the love of God. And sort of like, no, I've sort of, I've gotten used to that. I've heard that before. And you know what I just simply want to do just before we start and we dive into this, I just want to pray that we're going to have a fresh revelation of the love of God. All right. Is everyone open to that? You just say, I'm open to that. I receive that. Okay. So come on, just lift up your hand. Just, you're just saying, yes, pick me, Lord. Okay. All right. So Lord, I just pray as we're going to look into your word, I pray that you would give us a new and a fresh revelation of how much you love us. And God, you'd give us a fresh picture, uh, just a fresh understanding so that we could take hold of this as never before. And so God, just show up right now by your spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to speak to every life, illuminate our minds, just draw things to our attention. And I pray this over each one of us today, that this will be a Christmas like no other. So I say, let there be love. And I pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. So we're going to be off and running. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, listen, probably the most popular scripture that everyone knows that talks about the love of God towards us, of course, is John three sixteen. right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Right? And this is just the imagery is all there. Because God loves us so much, he sent his son. And then it says, it's this great act of love, and it says, and whoever believes in him. You see, the first part of it is saying that God so loved the world. There's no, God's not holding back. He's saying, everybody, God so loved everybody that he gave his son. But then it says this statement, but whoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. So I want to just jump into this just simply, and I forgot to mention this in the first service, is that you got to realize that God, again and again, and I'm going to (laughs) be trying to hit this out of the park to all of us, that we realize that the love of God is huge, it's immense, and it's all of these things, but we cannot stop there. Because you know what? Even culturally right now, we're just like, well, isn't God love? God, and you know, love, 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 and we just... but. There's something that comes after it, okay? God is love. He gave us his son, but we have a choice to believe and lean and step into that, right? We have a choice to make. God's love is all these immense and great things, but one thing that God's love does not do is God will not make you reciprocate. He will not make you just follow him. He's not, that's not the business that he is in. His love is actually free and given to each one of us, but we make a choice today about what we believe. So we want to hear the whole passage and we want to take it all in. And so here we are at this Christmas time. This is what we're celebrating. It's not, you know, don't want to bust anyone in this bubble, but it's not Santa and it's not reindeer and nice trees and all that type of stuff. Hey, that's great. And that's the commercial part of Christmas. But the meaning of Christmas is that Jesus, the son of God, came because God loved the world. Because God loves us, he sent his son. And it goes on to tell us, he said, I didn't send my son to condemn the world but to save the world. Many of the passages that you read and that we read at Christmas time, we'll be reading a number of them on on Christmas Eve when it talks about you're going to name him Jesus because he's what? He's going to save his people from their sins. There's so much tied up in who Jesus is, but he was sent here because God loves us. So it's more than just a nice story 
up until this point, we literally see it in Scripture. Scripture talks about this, that God had been sending messengers, but then he's sending his son, right? And it's the greatest picture of it all. Jesus, the son of God, coming as a baby, and not just coming just to, you know, for a nice nativity scene, but coming to lay down his life for all of us. This is absolutely the greatest act of love. In Ephesians chapter 3, and it says, And I pray that you, this is Paul writing, and I want you to hear this. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love. So you can just see that picture. Like your foundation, where your roots go down, that you will be like holding on to this, just like a huge tree that has roots that go deep down into the ground. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. And hear what it says to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love that surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Paul was making a prayer, and he saw it as significant that I need to pray that people are going to have a, a revelation or a realization of the love of God, and that they're going to know how great it is, how big it is, how far it goes, the extremes that God will go on our behalf because he loves us. He's actually saying, I pray that you'll even have the power together with all of the Lord's holy people to get a grasp and to understand this. And so today, this is really what I'm doing, is that I'm just trying to reiterate the words that Paul has spoken to us so that we will get the same message. The air that I've got in my lungs, the joys that we have, the very experience of being here together in the presence of God, this is all under the love, the life, the hope that God gives and God's love is offered to the entire world, not some select group, not some select, uh, you know, color, country, language. God's love has been offered to all of us. And I think this idea why God uses it is because I think in our just sort of like simple way, right, as humans trying to describe God, Love is the best way that we can do it. And love isn't just about what God does, right? In 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, and this isn't the only time. There is a number of times in Scripture that it makes this statement and it just simply says, God is love. It's not that just God, you know, loves us or God, you know, gives love well. It says that God is love. And I want to just say that it reflects the condition or the actual fabric of God. God is love. Yes. It's a big thought. It's even hard to get, you know, your mind wrapped around. So I'm going to run down a number of things trying to explain the love of God. But, you know, I think there's a significant thing that we need to all realize. Why is it so important that God is a God of love? I actually think that probably the greatest human need, I know that we need air and we need water and food and all of that, but we need love. We need to know that we're important to somebody, somebody truly cares about us, wants us, accepts us even unconditionally. And when we doubt that we're loved and when we don't believe that we're loved, well, come on, you've seen people that don't realize that, it's sort of like all bets are off. We, you know, I'm aware that often humanity, people, develop all sorts of unacceptable behavior to compensate when they don't know they're loved. And so all of us here today, all of us need to know that we're loved by God. And I'm going to just, just quickly, a comparison. You see, God's love just simply is out of, wor out of this world amazing, completely unconditional, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to just unpack this for us, okay? God's love is out of this world amazing, and it's unconditional, okay? You see, earthly love often, as long as we get what we want, when we will love somebody. As long as there's a return on that investment of love, we'll love somebody. But there's a fundamental difference between the ways that, you know, we as humans love one another and the way that God loves us. God's love is completely unconditional. You could be here today and you could be like, I don't believe in God. 
God loves you. You could be a person, well, I don't just not believe in God, I actually will mock anyone that even does. God still loves you. You can be complete, you, I could go to the ends of the earth to get away from God, God still loves you. It's unconditional, right? It, this is how it's described in scripture. These aren't my ideas. This is how God has chosen in his word to describe his love for us. It's completely unconditional. It's not built on your merit. It's not built on you reciprocating. It's not built on you understanding. You know how scripture says it wasn't us that first loved God, right? It was that God first loved us, right? While we were still sinners, okay? It says God demonstrates his love for us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. All of these things, it's not based on you performing in any way. God loves you. You see, sometimes... <clears throat> We've heard this before, but I want to remind us. It's like we've gotten used to hearing that, that God loves us, and that it's, but it means something, right? You know when somebody loves you and cares for you? Um, you know, if, if you're a parent, uh, I think this all the time. I don't think any of my boys are in here, so I th it's okay, right? But you know, I hug my kids, and I, 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 like, I adore my children, right? Just, just as, you, you know, and it's not based, in fact, my kids sometimes drive me crazy, <laughs> right? They just do, and I'm just like, oh, and at times I'm just, oh, Lord, who's raising them, right? I'm like, <laughs> Michelle's over there, it's Tony's fault. Tony's over there going, it was Michelle's fault, <laughs> you know, but... It's like, at times, I'm trying to explain it. And you know what? And I think, you know, I have one that's, he's going to be 14 soon. So he's in this really, you know, if you've had one in that age, you know, this is, it's the beginning of crazy. <laughs> right? And I know I'm trying to tell him, I'm like, I'm like, Jaden, you don't, I love you. Right? I am like, I am so for you. There isn't anything. There isn't. He doesn't understand it yet. Right? And I think that many of us are the same. God is like going, I am so for you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm believing for the absolute best for you. The things to come. The, you know what? Oh, I wish I could bind up all the things that hurt you even now. And the fears that you have. I wish I could, you know, console them. And I wish, I wish you could just get a hold of it, right? And, and I, I sense that same thing. I look at that with my own children. I'm like, like, I just wish they'd get it. They would. Oh, my goodness. If they would just get it. Right? And I think God, so many times, he's just looking at us, and like, I just wish that they would just get it. They don't know. They hold the keys to the kingdom. They don't know that I'm with them. They don't ever have to be afraid. They don't have to be scared that I'm going ahead of them. If they only knew, they don't have to be afraid at night. They don't have to be worried that all of these things, they don't have to be wounded. They don't have to be broken. I love them that much. I'll make a way. I'll step into the gap. God is saying all of those things, but it's just like I've gotten used to it. Or somehow it's just out of my understanding. I'm not aware of it. And so today, I'll just, again, I'm just trying to push us so that we have a fresh realization again of this love that God has for us. You know, I love this idea. I can't take credit for it. I read it somewhere, and it just so stuck with me. I'd like to give the person credit, and I don't even know who it is, okay? But it just, it just so hit me that God did not send Christ, okay? God, you know, we know that God loves the world, but it, God did not send Christ, and Jesus did not come, okay, as a reward to the obedient, but rather as a ransom for the defiant, the lost, the broken, the hater, the sinner. That's why he came. You know, I know that we live under so much blessing because, you know, when we are obedient, and when, but we, we have to realize 
that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Why? Because he loves us. He sees us as valuable. He came to, you know, he came literally to meet us and to get us and to take us into eternity. And, and that wasn't just for good people or people that had everything lined up or did everything well. Quite the opposite, actually. Jesus came to offer all of those things to the broken, the lost, I absolutely, absolutely love that picture. He does not discriminate. His love is open to who all who would receive and believe. It's that simple. So I want to describe it in a couple words. Number one is this, is that God's love is sacrificial. It says this in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Just so you won't think that these are just my ideas, I'm going to hit you with some scripture here, all right? It says, God demonstrates his his own love for us in this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, it says, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came because he loves us, and he came to lay down his life as a ransom. Your basic is like, I'm stuck in jail, or I've been kidnapped by sin, however you want to look at it. And Jesus is like, I'm showing up, and I'm paying the ransom with myself, and you're going to go free. It's an absolutely amazing picture of the sacrificial nature of God's love. He is willing to give of himself to express his love for you. So that's number one. The next thing is that, you know, not only is it just plainly just sacrificial, but we know when we read this even in, in John 3.16, it says that, for God so loved that he gave. He was willing to give of himself. He loved the world. He loved you so much. It didn't just, well, that's just a nice, beautiful idea. I'm going to give. Give. And I want to just tell you, his love is big. Psalms 103, verse 11, it says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great. Is his love for those who fear him. Think about that. For as high as the heavens are above the earth. God's trying to describe it for us. This is how big, as far as the heavens, we can't even really grasp that. You know, the heavens are above the earth. So great is his love for those who fear him. God's love for you is huge. I love this. His love for you is unfailing. Psalms 32, verses 10 to 11 says, Many sorrows come to the wicked. But unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. Just hear that again. Unfailing love surrounds you. You might like, like, I need to hear this today. God's unfail. I, I might fail. I might be broken. I might get off the rails. I might, whatever it might be. But God doesn't. His love is unfailing. It never ceases. It keeps on going. He's just saying, Trust me. And I love how it goes. He said, so rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All you who obey him, shout for joy. All those whose hearts are pure. You know, I was thinking about this Christmas time. If there's just a simple thing that all of us need to just start doing, right? It's just be thankful. God showed up and he shows his unfailing and his sacrificial love for each one of us, his, his great love for all of us. And the best place that we can start, you know what? Well, I'm cleaning. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful. Yeah. I tell you, I'm not joking. I was cleaning yesterday and I was thankful. I'm like, Lord, I'm thankful I'm cleaning and not renovating. Oh, I've been renovating for years. I was like, oh, praise the Lord, I'm cleaning. I, I literally, I was like having like a glory moment. I was like, woo, woo. You know, I was going, I feel something on that, right? <laughs> you think I'm joking? I was honestly, I was like, I was like, no, thank you, God. You've been so good. Thank you, God, that you're with us. Thank you, God, that you came, right? Rejoice. His unfailing love is all around us. So rejoice. Take joy. Shout for joy. Thank God. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, God. So it doesn't just stop there. I love it how it talks about this in, in, in John chapter 1. It says, The Word became human. So this is Jesus, right? The Word became human and lived here on earth among us. And this is what, how it describes Jesus. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. Jesus, 
When you talk about him, not just the great teacher or anything, when you just, like, you got to know that Jesus is full of unfailing love. You might feel far away from God today. That's just how you feel. Jesus says, I have unfailing love for you. You know, you know, like there's so many times we feel a lot of things. We can feel far away from God. But what I hear God saying, my love will never fail. I will always love you. I will always be for you. I will always be standing right next to you if you allow me. I will always be there when you call. My love is unfailing. And not just unfailing, he's full of faithfulness, right? When I'm unfaithful, he's still faithful, right? This is an absolutely amazing and beautiful picture of the love of God. So not only is his love unfailing, his love is everlasting. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 1, it says, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. That's why so many of us are even here today. We're like, well, my testimony wasn't just this is just a straight line. I was like, no, because you were drawn by the unfailing love of God, right? The kindness of God, it says in his word, leads us and draws us to repentance. Not everyone just came to a church service one day and it was all just neatly packaged. It was a process, people coming into your life. It was seasons of struggle and all sorts of things. And it, and it was just the God showing up and, you know, being illuminated in your heart and in your mind. It was a process. Why? Because he's drawing you with an everlasting love that does not change, and he has called you unto himself. But I love this, an everlasting love. So even when this life is over, Jesus is still going to be loving on you. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you know, it's not just like, I don't even know what that's going to exactly be like. I wonder if heaven's going to be like when I try to hug my kids so they'll know how much I love them and I can't even capture it all. And I'm going to get to heaven and Jesus is going to be doing that to me. And he's going to be doing that to you. And he's like, they're going to get it soon. It's an everlasting love. It's been unchanging. I've been for you. Oh, I love you fully. I think you're the best. I think you're amazing. Oh, I am so for you. Oh, if you only could see the things that I have in store for you and plans that I have for you, the hopes that I have for you, if you could only grasp and take hold of it, right, you'd be freed by it, right? Hmm. Come on. You know what? Many of you have been freed by a great earthly love. Seriously. Come on, some of you men, you've been changed by a wife that loves you. Seriously. Come on, let's have an amen. amen. <laughs> and some of you wives have been changed too by a man that loves you. It's been scary. I get it, right? But we have been. We've encountered people in our life that have loved well, right? And we're changed by it. We are. But so much more that when we get a glimpse and we catch a grasp of just the supernatural nature of the love of God, man, we are completely changed and transformed. God actually describes it in his word. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, whenever anyone turns to the Lord. So when anyone, you know, experiences or receives Jesus, right, receives the love, the sacrifice, the reason that Jesus came. So whenever anyone turns to the Lord, it says, the veil is taken away. And now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who have with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image and likeness with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord. Now, I just want to just, I'm going to unpack this for you because I want us to understand something that happens. You see, God's love in the first place, as I've just been mentioning, God's love is so amazing and unconditional, and 
it's, you know, and I can't even, we could go on and on and on. There's so much more we could talk about that. But the next thing is that the love of God is a transforming agent, right? Both here on earth and it's supernatural. And when we encounter, when we turn to God, when we experience the love of God, something begins to happen in each one of us. Scripture's describing, first of all, you're free. It's not because I should be free sometimes, but I'm free because of God. I'm free because of his sacrifice. I'm free because he loves me. I'm free. I I can't attribute it to anything else. It's not because of actions I've done or things that I could pay for or anything. I'm free because God loves me. He's made a way for me. But it doesn't just stay there. I am being transformed and changed with ever-increasing glory. We're about to turn the page on 2019. It's almost done. You only got a couple days left. It's all right, because God's got a plan for 2020, right? And God's going to take you to new places and do new things in you. And the spot that you arrive at today, because God loves you so much, he is going to continue to change you, transform you. There's going to be an ever increase. I'm not making it up. This is what scripture says about you. When we experience, when we walk and we embrace the love of God and relationship with God, something is going, you are going to be changed, transformed. This is how it works. And so God's love doesn't leave us where we are. You know, sometimes I make a choice to stay where I am, but I know that God's love for me desires to move me to new places. Some of you are going to have to take a little bit of time to think that through. I hope that over these next couple days and this week, you'll think that through. God wants to take you to somewhere new. God wants to change you. There's things that you're afraid of. He wants to heal you, and you're not going to be afraid anymore. There's, you know, there's probably things that you're holding on to that, you know what, you get your value from, but God's like, I, oh, your value should be that I love you, and I'm for you, and I'm with you, and you need to shift. You're going to have to let go of what's maybe comfortable to you and move to the things, you know, the vision and the integrity and the calling and even just the identity that we get from being in relationship with God who loves us. You're going to have a shift, right? And when you do that, you're going to be free. You're going to be, you're going to be changed. You're going to, but it's a choice. You're going to have to let go of some stuff. You're going to have some time to think about it over the next couple days. But I love this This idea isn't just, you know, in one spot in Scripture. It's there many times. In Romans chapter 12, it talks about in view of God's mercy. If you read it in different trends, in view of the love of God, in in view of the sacrifice of God, in view of the grace of God towards us, it says, what should you do? It says, offer your life as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. This is your spiritual act of worship. That's what it says, Romans chapter 12, right? And then it says, and then do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but what? Be transformed. Be changed. You see, when I get a glimpse and I really realize again and I hear that, you know, God is for me and he loves me and he's with me and he has plans for me. And you know what? And in view of God's mercy, I lay down this life of mine, right? Before God, something begins to happen. Even though my world is trying to, trying to make me conform, make me, you know, shift into its pattern. I don't know about you. We, <laughs> I have this difficulty Sometimes it's, it's a little bit of a plague on my mind, okay? A couple, uh, about a year or so ago, we do this uh, assessment of everybody uh, on, our, on our staff. It's called the Berkmans. Anyways, one of my things is that I have a scientific mind, okay? And one of the main things about that is that I want to know why. <laughs> I'm that little kid, you know, when you're two years old. Why, Daddy? Why? Why? Why, right? I don't know about you, but right now in my world, when I'm watching all the stuff that I watch on the news, all the stuff that's happening, all the turmoil around me, and my mind is just going, why, why, why? It's enough to drive me crazy. Seriously, I have to literally submit it to God. I have to because 
I feel like for me, and just the way I'm wired, and this isn't everyone, but I just feel like the world's trying to make me conform to how it thinks and how it functions. And, and my mind is actually trying to answer why. And all of this stuff is just working, and I'm just like going, but I've just found myself again. I'm just like, I'm like, God, I don't care. I just need to hear from you. I need to hear what you're saying. I need to know what you're speaking, right? I need to be transformed by you, not conformed by my world, right? And so I want to encourage you. There's, this is, I'm trying to draw this out for you so that you can see how it looks because some of us, there's a lot of pressure in this life to conform and just go along and, and you don't even know half the times, why do I believe what I believe? Why do I think what I think? And I just want to just say to us yet again, can we draw back and go, let's just go to this simple thing and just go like, God, I see what you've done and I lay down my life and I put it before you because of your love. I receive that love and I step towards it. And today, over myself and over all of us, I don't want to conform to the pattern of this world, but I want to be transformed by your love, changed, different. You see, so God's love isn't just amazing and unconditional, it's transforming. And you know, I want to just really just capture this a little bit. You know, when you read, I read this often when we do weddings. You know, it's called the love chapter. And it describes the love of God, right? And it says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Right? This is an absolutely amazing, beautiful picture of love. Right? But you know what? I don't know about you. I, I read those words, and sometimes I don't know why. I don't know if it's I just went to church for too long. But I remember every night when I would go to bed when I was a child, and I'd be like, I'd be like I cannot forget anything wrong I did. Because I need to be like, dear Jesus, I stole the cookie. Please forgive me. Dear Jesus, I did say that bad word. And forgive me what I think about, you know, my teacher, right? And then I'm like, dear Jesus, I know my brother's not very nice, but I didn't do the right thing. No, no, you don't. But I'd be like, literally, I remember, I'd be like, I got to make sure I don't forget anything. Because if I forget anything, and I died tonight, right? I'd be like, would I go to heaven or not? Over a cookie, maybe. <laughs> Over a gummy that I'd stole from the store, or whatever it might be. Like, if I forgot, right, because I had just sort of like broken this down and, and I, I, I viewed God almost as like God was mad at me. And somehow I gotta just make myself right with God, even through the eyes of a child. And we can make light of it as a child, but some of us are now adults and we do the exact same thing. We have all these conditions, and we, we feel like a failure so much of the time because we haven't done everything correctly. We didn't, you know, this, this line of following God hasn't been this perfectly straight line, and we live with just a sense of guilt and brokenness that it's not because God says he doesn't condemn, right? It does talk about in Scripture that there's an accuser of the brethren, but that's the devil, <laughs> right? Sometimes we have a problem that we can't identify the voices right. And so why I'm mentioning this is that when I read this passage, I, I look at it and I forget that this is how God sees us. You see, his love is always patient and it's always kind towards me, right? It doesn't, you know, it's, it's looking out for the best for me. And so I, I want to just capture it a little bit. If I could sort of just summarize when I read passages and when I look in God's word, and you know what? I'm going to say these statements like as if they're about me, 
But you know what? I want to encourage you. They're about you. They're about me. They're about all of us, okay? So I want you to get this. So when I think of the love of God, first of all, it is beyond me. I don't deserve it, but I know that it's there. It doesn't forget me, and it frees me. It sees me in a light that I never see myself. It hopes for me, and it dreams for me. This is how the love of God works. It forgives me long before I ask. It says I can when I feel like I can't. This is the love of God. It refreshes me and revives me. It protects me. This is what it's taught. Always protects, right? Always trusts. It always hopes, okay? God's love, it believes in you, okay? No one is a lost cause in the view of God's love. God's love doesn't give up. It doesn't give up on people. It doesn't give up on situations. It gives me patience. God's love, it moves me. God's love is compassionate. God's love, it cares. It doesn't hurt, it actually heals me. It always says, fresh new start today and another chance tomorrow. I remember writing those words and I was just like, that describes, I don't know, this is for somebody here. It says you can have a fresh new start today and there's another one tomorrow if you need that one too. That's the love of God. It doesn't criticize me or grade me. It's not some, you know, cosmic scorecard in the sky just checking things off. No, the love of God, it motivates me. It says never surrender, never give up. There are no lost causes in God's eyes. It focuses me. It gives me reason and meaning. It gives me new hope in all circumstances. This is the love of God, and it is amazing. So I want to say to you today, I'm just trying to capture it for so we can take a fresh look at it. Have you accepted God's love for you? Are you walking in a realization that God loves you and he's fully and he's for you? I just want to just say to you today, no matter where you are, that you would just, I accept the love of God so that I can walk free from my past that I can know today I'm not too much of a mess for God. He's still working on me. You see, I want to tell all of us to stop trying by human effort to obtain what is supernatural and cannot be earned. God's love is already available for you today. Jared, Jared, why don't you come back? Or Nevin. Um, There's so many of these amazing things. You see... I don't want to miss out. This Christmas time is one of these most reflective times that we realize that God is love. God has shown up. He's this expression of love for us. And we miss the point of Christmas if it's just about, you know, just the commercialized part of Christmas. We want to actually experience the love of God. So can I just, can we just close our eyes for a second? And you know what, this is, I don't even usually do this. I'm not even going to open up my eyes, so I'm not even going to know if anyone responds, okay? But I just, I just would just want to just say, I don't know the state of everyone's heart in this place. But maybe, maybe this is like a new message to you. And I just want to just encourage you that you would just say, God, I just, like it talked about, In Corinthians, it would just say, God, I turn to you. And I would just ask you, do you just say that to God? God, I turn to you. I turn from my old life and I turn to you. And just simply as it's said in your word, come in and change me. Transform me by your love. Your love is supernatural. It's bigger than me, it's everlasting, it's unfailing, it's all of these things. And we just say, God, come in and change me. Come in and change me. Change my heart, change how I see, change how I think. Give me just a fresh revelation of your love. 
So I pray that over every person here. If you've prayed that for the first time, oh, can I just can I just say, don't leave. Come talk to me before you go. All right? If that's too scary for you, can I just ask that you would tell somebody that you're here with that you've made a decision to turn to God. Tell somebody, okay? Let them pray with you and agree with you, right? That is the best decision that you can ever make, okay? The love of God is so great and so amazing. And so one last thing, it's Christmas time. And you know what? I think this is the best time. This is an easy time to do and to be love in our world. Because people, you know, it's Christmas time. This is a time of generosity and kindness and all that stuff. So I'm just thinking, this isn't something that I just want us to do, you know, but I'm here to remind us, you know, we're to be people that live in the love of God, right? And that needs to be expressed, expressed through actions and things that we do, of course, acts of kindness and all of this. But I wanna just encourage you at this time of year, you're gonna have opportunities even this week, it's Christmas, right? Be generous with your time, be generous however you can, be generous with your love. And why would I tell you to do that? Well, you see, God's love isn't just amazing and unconditional and God's love isn't just transforming, but God's love is actually seen through you. That's what scripture actually says I'm going to wrap this up with this. It says this in 1 John chapter 4. And it started reading at verse 7. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is basically my sermon today, all right? This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. But here's the part that I want you to get that talks about. So because of all these things that God has done on our behalf, it says, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Okay? Because God loved us, we should love one another. We got to love, you know, when God tells us, love your neighbor as yourself, right? Why is he saying these things? Well, I like when you read a verse 12, you can fact check me, all right? It says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Now, I'm not trying to say too much about this passage or read too much into it, but when I read this, what I hear God saying, he's saying, no one has actually physically seen God, but when we love one another, right? God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And I believe that when we, we love other people, people actually see the face of God and the love of God in you. You may not have ever thought of that, and I'm like, I get that, you know, well, I'm not trying to put myself up there with God, but I'm just saying, when we live in the love that God has for us, and when we follow this out and we live it out in actions, right? God's telling us, we need to love the people around us. We need to care about the people around us. And when we do, I just have a feeling it'll be easier to talk to your neighbor someday about God when you live in love towards them because they'll begin to see God in you. I just think, you know, when we go to the broken and to the lost, and you know, I don't even say to our church, all the gifts that we've given away to people we don't even know at this Christmas time. We do it every year. You know what I do? I really sincerely, I applaud you. Why? Because we are being the love of God. We're being the hands of God extended into our community. We're caring about people we don't even know yet, right? But I believe in that moment, you know, I, I think about, the teacher at our student program 
and she hasn't been here the last couple years. And so we're redoing the gifts for all the students. And I know she came to say to Willie, she's like, explain to me again how this happens, right? How does this happen? And we're like, well, the church people come and they give money and, and then we're gonna give that money so that we can buy all these kids stuff that they need at Christmas time. And she's like, what? Right? And we're like, exactly. Because this is how the love of God is supposed to be poured out. It's almost unexplainable. It's hard to understand, right? But this is who we are called to be, each and every one of us. I want God to be seen through me. I want God to be seen through you, everywhere you go, right? Amen, amen, and amen, and amen. So as we're gonna walk out of this place, and it's Christmas time, and I don't know if I'm gonna see all of you on Christmas Eve, even though you all should be here, all right? But even if I don't, right? This is the best time to start. I, I wanna just, just say to you, and on this side, I'm gonna pray over you as you go. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be your hands everywhere that we go, that we would be your feet. God, that we would be your mouth, that we would speak your words. God, that we would be your money, that we would be able, that we would be your gifts given away, that we would be your kindness wherever we go, that God, that you would use us. And God, I pray that this won't just be this week and it's a special thing that it's because it's Christmas time, but God, this will begin to change. We will be changed and we will see differently as we have a fresh encounter with your love for us. God, we will want to give it away. And so I pray that there's gonna be a change in how we function even this week in our daily routine and the things that we do, the things that we say, the kindness that we give, the love that we share. God, I pray it's gonna be a marked difference. It's gonna go up and up and up. And so I pray that over us. And I speak this over us today and I pray it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, and everybody said amen and amen and amen, amen. All right, all right. Well, bless you today. Have an absolutely amazing Christmas. We'd love to see you on Christmas Eve, four o'clock, six o'clock. It's gonna be absolutely, absolutely awesome. Okay, bless you, Merry Christmas. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. We would love to hear your story and what God is doing in your life. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email us info at the pc.ca. At People's Church, we're here for you. We have something for everyone. You can check us out at the pc.ca or like us on Facebook. Have a great week and thanks for joining us.